my own hometown. Stranger. Howdy, folks. Little Johnny here. We're in the brewery. And I'm uh, getting organised to put down a. Uh, the Hop Ash Pale Ale I was talking about uh, a few days ago in the uh, What's Happening in the Month video. So at the moment I've got, uh, got water on heating up the strike temp and I'm just uh, finishing milling my grains. As you see I use uh, the old trusty Corona hand mill. Uh, it was cheap uh, when I need the mill. Uh, I've not got around to replacing it. Probably will one day. But at the moment it does the job. It's a little bit uh, labour intensive. Yeah. It takes me about yeah, 7 to 10 minutes to get through a uh, brew's worth of grain. It's not going to take me too long today. I'm only doing a, uh, this is only going to be a 14 litre batch. Uh, I'm going a little bit different. I'm going to do a, due to time constraints, I'm going to do a single mash full volume. Um, so I'm basically going to run the the mash ton with the Hearns coil and basically run it like a, a brewmeister or a you know, Robo brew grain father. Um, so I'll, I'll pitch full volume in, which will be around 26 litres on my system. Uh, I'm going to run that at about 65, 66 degrees for probably half an hour and then ramp up to 72 over half an hour and hold it for the, for the final uh, amount of time, so probably about 20 minutes. And that will do me, that's all I'm going to do. I'll drain that and I'll boil it. There's going to be no sparging, you know, no rinsing, no mucking around. Um, again, this batch is very experimental. Uh, I want to, just want to play around with hot patch. I'm not sure what I'm going to get in the way of bitterness and IBUs in the, in the end product. Um, I've got the two, the two chunks of hot tops there and it's saying an alpha acid between 16 and 32 percent. So depending on how I go, this technically could end up anywhere between about 28 IBUs and probably could stretch as far as, you know, well into the mid 50s, even low 60s. So it could go from a pale ale right through to an IPA depending on how much that acid actually converts. So I'm looking at simple mash. I'm going to do a short boil, probably only do a 30 minute boil uh, with all the hop additions I think I've got planned to be from, uh, I think from 20 minutes onwards. Might have been, actually might even be 15, might be 15, 10, 5. Uh, additions, so I don't want to throw anything in there that's, that's too long that's going to really throw the bitterness through the roof if that alpha acids are higher than I've allowed for. I allowed for 24 in my calculations and that gets me to 32 IBU for this brew which is around the mark I'd normally go for this style. Um, I'm running 90% Maris Otter which is what I'm grinding here at the moment and 6% wheat and 4% Cara Munich, Cara Munich 1. Uh, so that puts me grain bill wise somewhere around pale ale, golden ale. Um, I'm not, again, not specifically trying to hit a certain type of outcome. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to finish getting this ground up, get everything together. Uh, we'll come back, we'll do a little bit of a look a bit later on. Righto folks, so we're just into the uh, ramp up to, well, mash out. So I'm raising the temp up from the 66 up to 72. That's happening as we speak. So I'm going to start weighing out this uh, hop hash, which could be interesting. So while I'm doing that, I'm just uh, sucking on the first trial bottle of the uh, Pilsner Partial I did back at uh, the start of May. It's 
slide it up to the father-in-law. There was a video a couple of uh, a couple of videos ago, and that's not tasting too bad. It's a bit lacking on head. You can probably do with another week. I bottled that into the PET bottles because I didn't have any, I couldn't get hold of any glass. Um, the bottle wasn't really rock solid, so it might be a little bit longer. It's been pretty cool here. We've got yeah, obviously getting in the winter. Uh, sheds only sit on sort of 16 degrees during the day, so. That's alright. Nice new glasses. I scored these today. Uh, someone linked up a post on the uh, on the Aussie Home Brewer Facebook page uh, to an eBay link. They were selling 20 of the Headmaster brand Empire schooner glasses. Um, I current, I've been using uh, Empire style. Um, they're 330 mil glasses, so 360 mils. They work really good for the for little stubbies. And I've been using them. Um, these come up now. It was 20 bucks delivered for 24 of them, which was bargain shopping. So I jumped on it. I went down today, picked them up. And lo and behold, there's two boxes of them sitting there. Bargain. So I've got 48 uh, beautiful, really heavy. Schooner glasses, Headmaster, for 20 bucks. <laughs> the chick at Big W, she said, <laughs> have a nice day. I said, I am. Right, so we're getting, getting this hop ash. What do I want? Eh, five grams of centennial, that's 5.7, close enough. I'm not going to muck around with it too much. So that's my uh, first edition of 20 minutes. I wasn't sure before, but it's, it's 20. Uh, second edition. Well, we'll do this one here while we're going. I've got 10 gram of Centennial, which will be the uh, third edition. That's going to be at 5 minutes. Yeah. And this stuff is, it's like, it's like hash. It doesn't smell like ash, but it's the same, it's, it's sticky and gluggy. No. That's a bit on, uh, it's nearly 11 grams. But oh, that smells come wicked. This, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this turns out. So, that's the Centennial. Five grams at 20 minutes. There's a 10 gram dash there at 5. And then we've got the El Dorado. Yeah, I managed to bust into this when I first got it, just to have this sort of look at it. And again, you know, the copper pool jade with that, it'd have a bloody fit. So, there we go. So we're looking again, 5 grams of the El Dorado for a 10 minute edition. A little chunk there. I'll say this is actually a little bit easier to work with than I thought it was going to be. I thought it might have been a little bit more sticky and whatnot, but no. no. So there's a bit over five grams for the Eldorado. Now I said that's going at ten, and there'll be another five grams of Eldorado, which will also go in five minutes with the uh, other Centennial. Okay, a bit over five grams, good enough. It's a car. It's no good trying to be precise because I don't even know how to even start measuring the arthritis on this stuff. Okay, that's done. So that's ready to go. So I'm just waiting now for the uh, mash to finish. Uh, it's got another seven minutes to go, then I'll raise it up to uh, 75 just to shut it all down, leave it there for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to run that into the kettle and get that boil up and going. So in the meantime, I'm going to continue drinking this one. I'll tell you, Father-in-law's going to be happy with that.
I'm going to That's drinking pretty good. Yeah, so anybody wants to do an easy, they're yeah, looking for an easy lager, Pilsner, go back and watch that all grain, uh, not the all grain, the uh, partial Pilsner recipe, because that's pretty good. Righto, I'll we'll get on with the rest of it. Alright folks, end of the day, uh, just waiting on the uh, final settle, settling here before I transfer to the fermenter. Got uh, just under 17 litres in there, so it's going to come out pretty close to me, 14 litres, which was my target uh, volume. I think I might have been a few points under. Uh, the gravity from the earlier check, I'm probably going to, I was aiming for 10.46. Looks like I'm probably going to be around 10.43 um, and that's probably just from not adjusting my efficiency settings down. I've left it on the uh, settings for a full batch uh, and obviously being a smaller batch I've got a lot more uh, dead space and wastage so uh, that's probably all that is. So that's not a problem though. Um, I was looking for an initial 4.7% alcohol um, straight up, so it's only going to drop it to 4.4, so we're going to hit 4.748 in the bottle. Um, if it goes there, or I'm happy with it, you know, 4.344 in the keg, that's not a problem. Um, the issue I am having right now though is that the starter I did of the Y East twelve seventy two uh what is it American Ale two uh which is actually now pushing five months old um doesn't seem to be kicking off. It the pack swelled it took a little while to swell but it did swell quite well so I thought well I've probably got a little bit of viability there but it's been sitting on the stir plate since about nine o'clock this morning. It's now uh, it's pushing on to five o'clock in the afternoon. So it's been sitting there for eight hours and there's no sign at all of anything going on. Uh, I'll give it another couple of hours. I'll give it another four or five hours. I haven't got a pitch the yeast immediately. But it looks like I'm going to have to go back to a reserve of a USO5 slurry I've got sitting in the fridge. Uh, and probably end up having to pitch that. It's not too much of an issue, but I was interested. I've never used a 1272 before. Um, but this is what's going to happen if you're going to leave them sitting around for months and not use the bloody things. So. so that's where we've ended up. That'll, I'll call that a day. I'm not going to worry about it again. You know how to put stuff in the fermenters. Um, so, yeah, so that's the Hop Hash Ale. Uh, and I said we've gone through we've just on a single uh, one vessel recirculated mash so um, it's going to be interesting to see how that turns out with the final uh, the final product um, the volumes have been good so it worked from that sense uh, and like I said the gravity is only a, that was only a calculation problem on my part so I think we've um, hit numbers as expected um, the ramp, the mashing, the steps all went through relatively trouble free today which was good uh, so all in all I'm pretty happy with how the day's gone I've got me Pilsner bottled up that was a freaking nightmare um, that's the second batch now I've used in the fast ferment and just a word to the <laughs> anybody out there who wants to listen I will not be using that bloody thing again it's a freaking nightmare uh, I don't think it's done any good at all to the beer. I, it wasn't particularly clear coming out of it, despite the steps that should have been taken to make sure it was. Um, I'm pretty confident I could have got a better result using the normal fermenter and not worrying about dumping yeast and you know, secondary fermentations without the yeast. And if anything, um, judging from the samples, I'm thinking it's, it's not benefited from not being on the yeast. So, um, yeah, 
I won't be using that thing again, and it's going to be interesting to see how that Pilsner turns out. Uh, again, that's down the track a little bit. So, that's all for me today. So until uh, next time you're looking at me, good brewing.